Alright, um, it's been a while since I've made one of these, so my handwriting on the tablet might be a little bit messier than usual. This video is about, oops, it's about air masses. And the characteristics of an air mass is determined by the land um, below it. And the land is called its source region. So in other words, if the land is hot or cold, if there's water near the land, those all contribute to the characteristics of the air mass. So generally speaking, um, the air mass is determined by its temperature and its humidity. So that leaves us with just a few options. So the air mass could be hot and humid or moist. It could be hot and dry. It could be cold and humid. And it could be cold and of course dry. And then there's a the fifth option where it could just be really, really cold. And this is my my font for cold. Hope you recognize it. Okay? And so there's a few couple of terms um, that we should be aware of. If an air mass is hot, then that's called tropical. If the air mass <coughs> is cold, then we label that as polar. And then, if it is that super, super cold one, we call that Arctic, or sometimes Antarctic. And so our air mass is determined by two basic things. It's determined by the sun. That's my sun. And it's also determined by um, whether or not there's water involved. And here's my water. Oops. Here's my water. All right. So to give you an example, let's go to another layer. We have a desert. All right. So you can see that's very hot. Let's say you know, let's say it gets up to I don't know 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's extremely hot, but it's very dry. There's no water in the desert. And so the air mass above a desert will, of course, be hot and dry. And another example would be uh, somewhere near the ocean, where a lot of, it happens to me all the time, a lot of water is going to evaporate. And let's say it's not very, very, very hot. Let's say it's nice. 70 degrees Fahrenheit and so we have uh, a situation where it's um, cool or cold and humid all right and so you know we'll probably see a lot of lush trees and vegetation there and then um, to give you an example of different areas Let's say, let me get a different color here. Let's say we talk about, um, you know, the Florida, Florida area, or maybe even uh, Southern California. Those would be examples of hot and humid areas, right? Um, maybe up in Washington, Oregon, where it's cooler, but also near the lake, or I'm sorry, near the ocean, this would be a cold and humid. Okay. If we think about the central states or the, the southern central states, right, Texas, New Mexico, that would be an example of a hot and dry climate. Um, and then let's say maybe further north, uh, maybe in this area of Canada, we would get something that is uh, cold and dry. And then, of course, if we go further up north, uh, we would just get that really cold one, that 
would be Arctic. All right, so just to give you an example. Um, and then finally, here is, here is a map, and you can see pretty much what I laid out for you, uh, continental, tropical. And continental means that it's within the continent, uh, so inland, and it doesn't, it's not near oceans, so it'd be hot and dry. Maritime, tropical. Maritime refers to the ocean, so maritime tropical would be warm and moist. And then finally, continental Arctic, uh, which would be right up here where it's bitterly cold and dry. So there you have it. There's the five types of air masses. And the thing that you do want to remember is that it is determined, gosh, I keep doing that, determined or and characterized by two things, its temperature and the amount of humidity. If it's hot, it's tropical. If it's cold, it's polar. And then we added two more terms. Um, let's put this in a different layer. Two more terms. Um, it would be continental. <laughs> continental. All right. Or it could be maritime. Okay, so maritime by the ocean and then continental not by the ocean. All right, six and a half minutes, um, a few mistakes, but uh, I think I think it'll be a keeper.